Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Letitia Stock? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing you by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Letitia Stock was born on August 4, 1983. In 2020, she lived in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and was married to a man named Eugene Albert Stock, who went by the name Al. They had a blended family, which included three children. Letitia had a 17-year-old daughter named Harley. Al had an 11-year-old son named Gannon and an 8-year-old daughter named Lena. The family lived in a 2,500-square-foot ranch house with four bedrooms and a two-car garage. Letitia worked as an assistant teacher in a local school district. She had a criminal history which included being convicted of communicating threats and unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On Monday, January 27, 2020, at about 6.55 p.m., Letitia Stock called 911 to report her stepson, Gannon, missing. She was told to call a non-emergency line. Letitia said that Gannon was supposed to be home about an hour earlier. She went to his friend's house to find him, but he was not there. The police responded to her house and spoke to her. Letitia told them that she last saw Gannon at about 3.15 p.m. when he left the house to play with friends. Here's what the police found during the course of their investigation. When investigators searched the Stock family house, they found blood in the garage. When they looked in Gannon's bedroom, which was located in the basement, they discovered evidence of a violent struggle, including blood spatter on the walls and blood soaked through the carpet. Some of the bedding, which was normally in the bedroom, was missing. Investigators learned that on January 27, Gannon stayed home from school, it appeared as though he had some type of stomach illness. Letitia called out of work to care for Gannon. She told her employer that her stepfather was hit and killed by a car. If she was going to lie anyway, it would have been easier just to say that she wasn't feeling well. Perhaps that did not occur to her. No one else was in the family house except for Letitia and Gannon. Letitia left the house in a Nissan Frontier at about 10.16 a.m., she left her phone at her residence during this trip, which was highly unusual. Letitia drove to a Petco store, which was about 30 minutes away, and made a purchase at 11.22 a.m. She returned to that same store and made another purchase at 1.22 p.m., two hours later. Letitia's husband, Al, sent a text message to Gannon's phone at 12.06 p.m., when Letitia was away from the family house. A reply was sent from Gannon's phone back to his father at 1.21 p.m. It read, Can I play Zelda at least? 22 minutes later, a search was made from Gannon's phone. Quote, Can my parent find my cell phone if it's off? Unquote. There was a period between the word phone and the word if, as if the period was used instead of a space. Letitia was in the habit of doing this, which supports the idea that she actually made the search and not Gannon. Letitia arrived back at her home at about 2.20 p.m. and accessed her phone about 25 minutes later. Al's daughter, Lena, arrived home from school at around 3.15 p.m. Letitia told her that Gannon was asleep in his bed and she could not see him. Letitia told her to play outside. Letitia sent a text message to her daughter, Harley, asking for trash bags, baking soda, and carpet cleaner. On the morning of January 28th, Letitia rented a 2019 Kia Rio from a vehicle rental company in Colorado Springs and picked her husband up from the airport at 8.50 a.m. She told her husband that she rented the vehicle because she did not want to put miles on her Volkswagen SUV. Letitia lied to him about where the Volkswagen was located. She said it was near a school, but it was actually parked at the airport. Letitia picked up the Volkswagen at 7 p.m., and returned the Kia Rio the next day. The police seized the Volkswagen and found that it had recently been cleaned. 
Despite this, traces of blood were discovered in several areas of the vehicle. Letitia was interviewed by the police on January 29, 2020. She now offered a much different story about what happened to Gannon. Here's what Letitia said happened on the afternoon of January 27 when she arrived home. Letitia entered the house, turned off the security system, and walked down to the basement. There she was confronted by a Hispanic male who she knew as Eduardo. Letitia said that she first met Eduardo the day before when she saw him working on a house in the neighborhood and asked him to repair her carpet. Evidently, Gannon had burned the carpet by accident. Eduardo agreed to make the repair, and Letitia gave him the garage door code. He was going to repair the carpet while she was shopping the next day. This must have been how he gained access to the house. At this point, Eduardo conducted an assault of a sexual nature against Letitia. This occurred between 2.30 and 3.30 p.m. During the attack, Gannon jumped on Eduardo and was thrown across the room. Eduardo asked for a suitcase before knocking Letitia unconscious. When she woke up, Gannon and the attacker were gone. She proceeded to clean up the crime scene instead of calling the police. Letitia could not provide any description about this mysterious attacker other than he was a Hispanic male with brown hair and brown eyes. At this point in the police interview, Letitia said that she wanted to leave. The police told her that she was being detained. She responded by saying she was having shortness of breath and chest pain. She was taken to the hospital, but did not have any life-threatening problems. Letitia was detained, but then released. On February 1, Letitia departed Colorado in a rented van. She was seen putting a suitcase in the van before she left. Letitia arrived in Florida on February 4. On February 18, Letitia called a place that sold fake polygraph results, but they refused to sell anything to her. There is no reason to buy fake polygraph results. By definition, all polygraph results are fake. The term fake polygraph is redundant. I guess one could say that there is no need to break one's regular routine to pursue a final outcome of buying polygraph results because it is a true fact that the added bonus of their false pretense is a free gift. On March 2, 2020, Letitia Stock was arrested in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and charged with murder. She pleaded not guilty after being returned to Colorado. She attacked a deputy on the trip to Colorado. On March 17, Gannon's body was found in Florida, not far from where Letitia had traveled. On February 11, 2022, almost two years later, Letitia changed her plea from not guilty to not guilty by reason of insanity. Letitia's trial started in March 2023. She was convicted of first-degree murder after deliberation and three other charges. Letitia Stock was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Now moving to my analysis. The debate in this case was not about who killed Gannon Stock. Letitia's defense admitted that she was the killer. I don't think they really had much of a choice. The judge compared the quantity of evidence in this case to Mount Everest, yet somehow that was still an understatement. The question in this case was really about insanity. Letitia's defense argued that she suffered from dissociative identity disorder, which I will refer to as DID. With this in mind, let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Letitia was guilty of murder, starting with the inculpatory factors. There is no question that Letitia killed her stepson Gannon. She stabbed him 18 times with a knife, hit him in the head with a blunt object, and shot him three times. There is no reason to believe that Gannon was a threat to Letitia, so this was not a case of self-defense. Letitia made many attempts to conceal the homicide. She cleaned the scene of the killing and cleaned her SUV. She dumped Gannon's body in Colorado before moving it to Florida. Letitia faked being ill to go to the hospital. She tried to pay a neighbor to lie to the police about witnessing Gannon being kidnapped. And she repeatedly lied to investigators and made up fantastical stories about mysterious and non-existent perpetrators. She started by blaming Eduardo and then eventually blamed someone named Quincy. She had about five different stories altogether. I guess Eduardo could breathe a sigh of relief after that Quincy story came out. 
Letitia searched terms on her computer that were quite suspicious. For example, face transplants. What do they do when they find a body in another state? And how do people avoid the FBI? The day after the killing, she searched, quote, can Nintendo find my Switch, unquote. This is a game console that Gannon often used. Letitia may have had a motive to commit this murder based on how she was unhappy with her marriage and unhappy with her child care responsibilities. Here are just a few of the internet searches Letitia made which support this theory. I am overdoing all the work for my stepkids and their mom doesn't help. My husband's ex-wife does nothing for her kids. I wonder if my husband's ex-wife is sending me a card since I raise her kids. One day some people will wish they treated you differently. Find me a rich guy who wants me to take care of his kids. I'm just a glorified babysitter. Find a new husband. Husband uses me to babysit his kids. I feel like I'm just a nanny, not a stepmom. And find a guy without kids. A mental health professional testified that Letitia may have been lying about having DID. This is a disorder that involves a person having two or more distinct personality states. These states are referred to as alters. Letitia suggested that she created additional personalities, which is not how DID is conceptualized. The origin of the alters is thought to be related to dissociation rather than a conscious decision. So a person cannot create their own additional personalities. In Letitia's description, one alter was aware of the activities of the other alters. Most of the time, the idea is conceptualized as involving gaps and recall. Essentially, the person with the disorder has amnesia or partial amnesia. The alter that is active does not know what the other alters have been up to. The personalities do not share memories. Many clinicians have argued that DID is not a real disorder. If it is not real, then Letitia would not have it either. Now moving to the exculpatory factors. Some clinicians believe that DID is real. A mental health professional testified that Letitia did have the disorder. That's pretty much it for exculpatory factors. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Letitia Stock was guilty? Yes. I believe that she was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Even if somebody wanted to believe that DID was real and they believed that Letitia had it, then the theory of the crime would be that one of her personalities committed the murder. That personality needs to be in prison. There's no way to separate that personality into another body, so it stands to reason that Letitia needs to go to prison as well. Moving to the next section, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. It appears as though Letitia was frustrated and angry about having to care for her stepchildren. She probably wasn't too happy that Gannon was sick on January 27, 2020. Based on the evidence, it appears as though Gannon accidentally burned the carpet and maybe himself in the process. He was in pain and seeking assistance. Perhaps he compared Letitia to his biological mother or asked for his mother, like he made some type of comparison that was offensive to Letitia. Maybe he suggested that his mother would be better equipped to care for him. Whatever he said caused Letitia to snap. In a moment of anger, she murdered him. Letitia had some mental health issues, but did not think they would help her to escape responsibility. Therefore, she pretended to have dissociative identity disorder. She faked the illness unconvincingly and was convicted. Moving to my last question, how do I see DID as a criminal defense? Many mental health clinicians are skeptical about the existence of DID. There is no scientific reason to believe the disorder exists in the way it is described in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. One could argue that the disorder is a fantasy created by clinicians who want their line of work to be a little more interesting and dramatic. They wanted to spice things up, so they included this fantastical disorder. A very small number of clinicians are responsible for making almost all of the DID diagnoses. Research studies have not supported the idea that DID exists. The fundamental problem is this. There is no way to tell the difference between a person pretending to have the disorder and a real case. Another problem is the inter-identity transfer of information. 
This is when one altar knows what another altar is doing. This transfer has been observed in people diagnosed with DID, which should not be possible based on how the disorder is conceptualized. DID symptoms can be better explained as a person having distinct and exaggerated mood states. These mood states look and feel like multiple personalities. Therefore, the person with the mood states starts to act as if they have more than one personality. They are behaving in a way which is congruent with their understanding of what's happening to them. Clinicians pick up on this behavior and get excited by the prospect of treating somebody with such a rare presentation. The clinicians then encourage the client to manifest even more symptoms, especially those that support the idea that they have more than one personality. This exaggerated mood state and iatrogenic contribution theory is a much more plausible explanation than the existence of DID. Iatrogenic is when a clinician causes a disorder. The case of Letitia Stock highlights how it is extremely difficult to mount a successful DID defense. The pinnacle of this tenuous tactic occurred when her defense suggested that one of her alternate personalities was faking insanity. There is this sense that her lawyers were one step away from demanding separate verdicts for each of her personalities. Those are my thoughts on the case of Letitia Stock. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.